In the mid-1980s, the city of Los Angeles lived in fear as a serial killer named the Night Stalker tortured and murdered people in their homes. Law enforcement then released a mugshot of Richard Ramirez, he had previously been arrested for auto theft, and the entire city was on high alert. On August 31st, 1985, Ramirez was captured and beaten by a group of residents in East LA who had recognised him in the street. Next came the trial of the Night Stalker. District Attorney Philip Halpin recalled, What I really remembered was the drama in court. Not since the days of Charles Manson did you have this circus going on. My name is Sheesh Merriweather, the founder of Crime Viral Online, and today I'll be doing what I do best, which is talking about serial killers. But before we look at the six most disturbing moments during the trial of Richard Ramirez, here is a special treat for all you true crime fans. Magellan TV is a new type of documentary streaming membership founded by filmmakers. Their team of producers and curators brings together premium content that dives deep into important documentary subjects. Magellan TV has some of the best collections available in true crime, history, science, nature and space. There are so many great choices, it's hard to stop watching once you start. There are over 3,000 documentaries to choose from and new programs are added on a weekly basis. Even better, there's a growing selection of shows available in 4K without additional cost. You can watch Magellan TV on any device or connected TV. You can even cast from your phone to your TV. It's super easy to use. So check it out now. Click the link below to get a full month free. Currently, I am obsessed with haunting Australia. And if you're like me and love to unwind whilst watching paranormal investigators run around a lunatic asylum, I'd recommend you start binge watching now too. Best of all, no ads, no commercial interruptions. Now let's get you back to the serial killers. The Night Stalker's defense team. Considering this was a murder trial for a type of serial killer who had never been encountered before in criminal history, Ramirez decided to allow defense attorneys Archoro and Daniel Hernandez to represent him at trial. Despite the fact that between them, they only had five years legal experience and had never worked a death penalty case before. The Hernandezes said they would take on the case pro bono in exchange for any future movie rights. Even the Superior Court judge voiced his concerns that Ramirez's lawyers were nowhere near experienced enough for such a high profile case. They were eventually proven right as Daniel Hernandez had been absent for a lot of the trial due to nervous exhaustion. So then a third defense attorney, Joseph Gallegos, was introduced to help with the case. Gallegos had previously been arrested for assault with intent to commit murder after he had a run-in with a prostitute and they got into a fight over money. Ramirez's sister Ruth said, you can't have a criminal representing you in court and Ramirez replied, yeah, but that was 10 years ago. Anyway, Ramirez got the death penalty, so that's how that all worked out for him. Night Stalker's Satanic Outburst When Ramirez first appeared in court, he came across as shy and quiet. Then whilst in prison, he started to receive a lot of letters from other Satanists who regarded him as a hero. Zena LeVay, the daughter of Anton LeVay, who founded the Church of Satan, visited Ramirez in prison and said that the church was going to make him an honorary member. These letters and recognition amongst Satanists really gave Ramirez this bizarre new confidence in himself. Since then, he would scowl at the TV cameras and held up his palm so they could broadcast to the millions of viewers who were watching the trial that he had a pentagram drawn on his hand. This moment in court has since become the image most associated with the Night Stalker. A juror is murdered. Halfway through the trial, one of the jurors, Phyllis Singletary, did not arrive for her jury duty. When police arrived at her home, they discovered she had been shot and killed. The judge sent the remaining jurors home to recover from the shock of her death. They were all left terrified, believing that Ramirez and the devil himself had orchestrated this kill somehow. 
Then following a further investigation, it was discovered that Phyllis had been tragically killed by her boyfriend following a domestic dispute. An alternate juror then replaced Phyllis as neither the prosecution nor defense wanted a mistrial. Cindy Hayden's obsession. Luckily, when the defense added an alternate juror, they did not choose Cindy Hayden from the bench. Cindy was in the alternate juror's pool, which meant she still had to appear in court every day throughout the trial to listen to all the evidence in the case. Cindy had become obsessed with the serial killer and on Valentine's Day had even gifted him with a cupcake that read I love you on top. The prosecution called more than 140 witnesses to testify against Ramirez. The court heard graphic detail of how he would strike his victims at night, entering their homes through the window or trying the doors and finding them unlocked. If the husband was at home, Ramirez would kill him first before brutally raping the wife. He wore all black and carried many weapons including a revolver, a machete, a hammer and a tire iron. Yet despite listening to this evidence, often hearing from the victims themselves, Cindy had fallen madly in love with the serial killer. There is another video on this channel titled Hi Bristophilia, Why Women Fall In Love With Serial Killers if you want to learn more about the psychology behind that bizarre phenomenon. Ramirez's Dental Hygiene Disturbingly, Cindy was not the only Night Stalker groupie who would turn up to court. The queen of these delusionals was of course Doreen Loy, who eventually married the serial killer whilst he was on death row. Ramirez was allowed one visitor a day in prison whilst awaiting sentencing. This was later relaxed to three visitors a day as the fights outside the prison between these women who were queuing up to see him were getting out of control. These Ramirez groupies might not have been so keen on the serial killer if they would have seen him pre-dental surgery. In prison, whilst he was awaiting trial, Ramirez had complained about crippling migraines after he ate the food, and he believed the prison wardens were trying to poison him. Those post-dinner migraines were likely caused by the rotten teeth in his skull. During the manhunt for the Night Stalker, detectives knew they were looking for a suspect with rotten, gapped and stained teeth. At the time of his arrest, nine of his teeth, according to the forensic dentist who testified during his trial, were decayed with teeth missing from his lower and upper gums. Following his conviction, his teeth were fixed by a prison dentist. Then in court, Ramirez appeared with his signature twisted smile, displaying new rows of shiny white teeth, and that was the image fixed in people's minds when they thought about the Night Stalker. The trial cost 1.8 million. The trial of Richard Ramirez was one of the longest and most difficult trials in criminal history. In total, the trial cost Los Angeles taxpayers $1.8 million, which would be $4.8 million today. At the time, this made it the most expensive trial in the history of California until later surpassed by the trial of OJ Simpson in 1994. On September 20th, 1989, the jury found Ramirez guilty on 13 counts of murder, 5 counts of attempted murder, 11 counts of sexual assault and 14 burglary charges. He was sentenced to death row. Speaking to reporters outside, Ramirez said, no big deal, death always comes with a territory, I'll see you in Disneyland. Another disturbing fact is Ramirez decorated his cell with crime scene photos from the trial that were passed to him by his defense team. One of the photos on his wall was of a victim who Ramirez had mutilated by stabbing her body several times and he gouged out her eyes. The prison guards could do nothing as Ramirez was legally allowed to have these photos as part of his defense. On June 7th, 2013, Ramirez died of complications from B-cell lymphoma whilst on death row at San Quentin Prison. He was 53 years old. I know I mentioned it before, but you guys have to check out the link to our High Brist Affiliate video if you want to try and get your head around, after all we have heard, this gruesome evidence, why somebody would fall in love with this kind of evil. 
Also, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment below with any future suggestions for our next videos.